Hello again, and this time welcome to our lesson on solving quadratic inequalities. Okay, so uh, quadratic inequality, let's start by what that means. A quadratic expression is a constant, constant terms or terms with exponents less than or equal to 2. Okay, so in general, if we simplify a quadratic inequality, it would come down to this. It would look like this. ax squared plus bx plus c is smaller or equal to or just smaller than or greater than or greater or equal to zero okay so that's that's what we mean when we have terms our terms will either be constant now if we say a term is constant it actually means it has an unknown to the power of zero but uh, we just call it a constant term and, and ignore that and then we might have terms with an exponent for x to the power of one and exponents to the power of two remember just recall a b and c we call it parameters and the parameters are actually values. This will be a 2, 7, 1 or whatever. They will be actual values. This is the basic format for an inequality, a quadratic inequality, where we have this form ax squared plus bx plus c. And of course you are so familiar with this already. Uh, we When we do quadratic equations that's also a quadratic equation the only difference is we have an equal sign equal to zero now what did we do with linear equations well inequalities I mean with a linear inequality we did exactly the same than with linear equations the only difference was that when we multiplied or divided with a negative number with a negative number we swapped the sign around okay when we multiplied or divided with a negative number, we swapped the sign around. The rest was all exactly the same. That's not exactly how it works with a quadratic inequality. And um, uh, the answer is fairly uh, uh, basic. And why it doesn't work like that is because if in, a, in an equation, what we would have done is we would have made two brackets. Okay, we would have had two brackets equal to zero, and then we would say, well, x is now equal to r1. Why? Because we made this bracket equal to zero, and we solved it, and we said, or x, is e x minus r2 is equal to zero, so x is equal to r2. Okay, so this, this was the method we used after we had two brackets. Now, why did we go from this step to there? Okay, we have to have a reason. Well, because we said that multiplying that this bracket multiplied by that bracket gives me zero, which means that either this bracket is zero, the first bracket, so in other words, either this bracket is zero, because the only way to get zero when I multiply is when one of my factors is zero. So either this factor is zero, or this factor is zero. Now this factor will only be zero if x is equal to r1 because r1 minus r1 would give me zero. Or this factor would be equal to zero if x is equal to r2. In other words, if this was something like x minus 2, x must be 2 for this bracket to be zero. If this was something like x plus 4, then x must be minus 4 in order for this bracket to be zero. Um, and, and that's the point. That is why we went from this step to that step. But now, if, if I'm still going to use the same approach, I'm still going to factorize my expression. Okay, so I'm factorizing my expression x minus r1 times x minus r2. That's now my factorized expression. Okay, <clears throat> maybe it, it might look like this. It might be, let's say, s1x minus r1. Okay, I don't want to make it complicated at this stage. Let's just say we have two very simple brackets. And let's choose a sign. I'm just going to choose smaller than zero. Now remember, I'm not saying that this bracket times that bracket is um, equal to zero. So it doesn't mean this bracket has to be equal to zero and 
or that bracket must be equal to zero. I'm saying that when I multiply these two brackets together, my answer is smaller than zero. Now, smaller than zero means what? It means it's negative. My answer is negative. So, that means either I've got x minus r to be negative as well, but if this one is negative, then and then this one has to be positive because my answer is negative. So x minus this is r one x r one x minus r two must be positive because if this one is negative, then this one has to be positive in order to, when I multiply them, get a negative answer. Okay, so notice very importantly, I'm using an AND. AND, so this one is smaller than zero, AND this one is, oh, not greater than C, greater than zero. Okay, now, let's go and say our, let's assume we, we are drawing this now. That's not the only solution, by the way. This, this, this is one half of the solution. The other half of the solution is that, let's say x minus r1 is now greater than 0. That's also an option. This can be positive or it can be negative. So let's assume it's positive. Then the other one must be negative. x minus r2 must now be negative. So if this one is positive, that one has to be negative. So these are my two solutions. Now let's go and draw this on a number line. So let's just assume that r1 is smaller than r2. There's r1. So there's r2. Okay. Now let's plot this first solution and let's do that in that same color. So we're saying that x minus r1 is smaller than 0 so um, x is smaller than r1 okay so x is smaller than r1 okay so it's everything from that that way down and x is greater than r2 Okay, so I just solve this with the normal linear methods we looked at in the previous one. Plus R1 this side, plus R1 that side, plus R2 this side, plus R2 that side. So here, um, I've, I have to be smaller than R1 and greater than R2. Now this is impossible. There, this is nonsense nonsense it's impossible you can't be smaller than r1 and larger than r2 at the same time you if it was or it's a different story okay it, or can be i can be lower than 0 or bigger than 10 but i can't be lower than 0 and bigger than 10 that's like telling you my age i'm younger than 20 and older than 30. That's nonsense. That, that person is lying to you. Okay. I can tell you I'm older than 20 and younger than 30. Because there's 30. I can be younger than 30 and older than 20. Okay. So that's possible. But I can't head in two opposite directions and use the word and at the same time and yet there's no intersection okay I can tell you I am older than 20 which is everything older than 20 and younger than 30 because there's an intersection between the two okay between the two descriptions I gave you so let's look at the second one so this is nonsense this is not the solution so let's look at that second solution if I had to draw if I had to draw this one, okay, so let's assume we've got R1 here, R2 there. Now we say that X is larger than R1, okay, so here's R1, X is larger than R1, and X is smaller than R2. Again, I'm using the same methods, just adding R1 on both sides and R2 on both sides on this side. So here's R2, so what interval is larger than R1 and smaller than R2. That's a compound inequality. That's saying X is larger than R1 
and smaller than R2. That's possible. That is this interval. This interval right here. Between these two are all the numbers larger than R1 and smaller than R2. So if I had to go and draw this interval, it would be between these two values. Okay, so this is quite a complicated way of solving it. Okay, so in other words, if the if going through all of this, are oh, you more than welcome to? It's a very reasonable way of solving this equation, looking at all of the options and then eliminating the ones that are nonsense um, and then choosing the ones that are correct. I'll, I'll do another one. Let's say we had x minus r1, x minus r2 is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, now this means it they are positive. Now, how can I get positive? I can get positive if, got, if I have a negative and a negative, or if I have a positive and a positive. So let's do the negative and negative first. So x minus r1 is smaller than 0, and remember, x minus r2 is smaller than 0. So if I draw this, I have R1 and I've got R2, so I'm smaller than R1 and included, and I'm smaller than R2. Okay, now that's possible. I can be younger than uh, 50 and I'm younger than 40. That's that's not a problem. But I can summarize all of that by just saying X is smaller than R1. Okay. So that summary x is smaller than r1 that is acceptable and it's a combination of these two because r2 is bigger and if I have to be smaller than r2 and smaller than r1 I can just summarize it by saying well I have to be smaller oh sorry or equal to I forgot my equal to sign equal to sign sorry about that okay the second would be where both of them are positive so x minus r1 is greater or equal to 0 and x minus r1 is greater or equal to 0. Okay, now this one, if I had to draw this, there's r1, there's r2. I'm sorry for the ugly, ugly sketches, but bear with me. So there's r1. I'm greater than r1, that side, and I'm greater than r2. Okay, so again, that's like telling you I'm older than 10, and I'm older than 20. Okay, so you can just assume, oh, well, you could have not said that. If you said this one, you're already saying you're older than 10. When I say I'm older than 20, I'm already assuming I'm older than 10. So I don't even need to, to mention this one. I can just mention x is greater or equal to r2. So this is also acceptable. So this is acceptable, or this one is acceptable. So there's a or statement here. So either x is smaller or equal to r1 or x is greater and equal to r2. There's an or between the different solutions. Even here I would have had the first solution and the second solution and if this one wasn't nonsense, so if this one was acceptable, then I would have had that this is a solution or this is another solution. Okay but this one was nonsense so we didn't accept it so we didn't need the or we just had the one solution which was a compound inequality okay so this is now my final solution I've got both of these as a solution is my timeline r1 the first solution is x is smaller than r1 so it's everything to this side or x is greater than r2 that's everything to this side. And again, notice the or. I am, I can tell you that I am thinking of someone. They are younger than 10 or they are older than 20. Okay. Because I'm saying or, it means it can be two different people. Okay. Cool. The or means they don't have to be true at the same time. It can be one or the other one. Cool. Um, but just to summarize, 
actually that I don't even use this method this is just too much work to get to an answer that you can get so to, to so much quicker if you use the um, graphical solution if we're going to use the graphical solution you're going to see that this answer we could have uh, gotten to these answers much much quicker so uh, meet me in the next video and I will show you the graphical solution that is very very simple if you know parabolas so of course if you don't know parabolas stick to this one but if you know parabolas let's move on to the next section and you'll see how simple it can actually be see you there